Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So today I want to take a look at this guy. This is the Quan Shang K5. This has been getting a lot of traction on YouTube from various channels. I've seen several reviews of this from several different YouTubers. I did not get this to review. I bought this with my own money. This isn't a paid endorsement or anything of this radio. I just wanted to get one to see how nice it was and what it did or did not do well. Price-wise, you have to compare it to something like a Baofeng. This is my favorite Baofeng. This is the UV6R. I've done a video on this before. We put this on the spectrum analyzer. This is a very clean transmitter. Works great. It is a basic FM model radio and it's somewhere around $30 to $35 and works fabulously and it is a absolutely bog standard bog standard Baofeng with the same lady that does the menu voice and the same features of any other Baofeng you've ever seen the difference is this transmits really clean got zero problems with this radio price wise it is the same as this radio this isn't going to be a review of this radio per se because I don't feel like going through all the features and you've probably seen the other 900 videos that have been done on this radio in the past couple of weeks. What I'm going to do is put this on the spectrum analyzer. We're going to take a look at what it looks like when it transmits on VHF and UHF and how clean the output signal is. The radio feels good. It, it has a nice heft to it. It doesn't feel like a cheap piece of junk. It's a slightly different lady talking on the menu voice, but uh, other than that, it looks a lot like and acts a lot like your typical Baofeng. The menu button works the same way. It has two VFOs, so on and so forth. It does have some unique features. Um, you can do an over-the-air clone, so if you have multiples of these, you don't have to program each one. You get one programmed, and then you can just over-the-air program your other radios, which is kind of a cool feature. But at the end of the day, I also want to make sure this thing isn't a Splashmaster 3000. So, let's jump over to the bench, take a look at this on the Spectrum Analyzer, and decide if this thing is worth the 29 35 whatever dollars that it costs. Let's jump. Okay, so we're set up over here on the bench, and let's take a look at the radio. So this is the K5, like I showed you a second ago. And I've got it set up, it's on... Uh, 146.52 and we'll test it on UHF as well and let's find out what does this thing look like when you transmit on it okay I've got us all zoomed in now and this is the same setup I've done previously we're going through the cell wave dummy load slash RF tap it's sitting right down here off camera there you go so we're transmitting into a dummy load I've got the radio on low power Oops, bump camera. Sorry about that. And uh, I got us zoomed in so we can see this a little better. So when we key up on 146.52, what have we got? And you'll notice that all the way to the left side is where our 146.52 is. And if you look at the peak table down at the bottom, you'll see that our peak there is minus 16.9 dBm. And then peak 2, which is the next highest peak that's even registering, is at minus 59 dBm. So if we take minus 16 from minus 59, we get minus 43. So that first harmonic is 43 dB below the primary signal, which is good. That's awesome. That's at uh, VHF frequencies. So let me switch this thing over. We are, we are scanning, by the way, from a start of 140 all the way up to 1 gig. So the third, fourth, fifth harmonics are just not even registering. There's somewhat of a third harmonic right there, but it's so low that the peak detect is not even fixing it. So let's switch this thing over to UHF. All right, we're now on UHF and still low power. And let's redo our frequencies and let's start at 400 megahertz and we'll stop at the top of this thing which is 1.5 gigahertz there we go one two three in order but you can see our amplitude is off so peak one 446 actually 446 and some change minus 7 dbm peak number two 
is minus 45 dBm, and peak number 3 is minus 36. So uh, while this passes on VHF, this kind of sucks on UHF. It's not kind of sucks, it sucks. Um, the difference between minus 36 and minus 7 is going to be minus 29 dBm difference between the primary and the third harmonic. Minus 39 dBm difference. Or minus 29, excuse me. Minus 29 dBm between our third harmonic and our primary. So that's that's pretty terrible. I gotta say I don't I don't recommend this radio. Um, certainly not on UHF at all. At all, because it is uh, it does not have any harmonic suppression or inadequate harmonic suppression. Certainly, what that looks like to me. Guys, sometimes you can get a cheap radio that's a bargain. I have a UV6R. I'm pleased with it. It looks great. I did a video on it where we did this same thing, and it does not have the harmonic issues. It costs $29, $35, something like that. This is about the same price. So they're both available on Amazon, and I'll put a link to them in the description below. But I would, I would not recommend this in spite of all the cool features that the other YouTubers have shared um, about this radio. I cannot recommend this because you're going be, to be splattering all over the band. It's not as bad as that Abri radio that I did a video on, but the short version is this thing sucks. Guys, that's all I've got for today. 73. Have a good one.